It's time for the Granada Forum Radio Show. Right now, live on air with your host, Granada Wendy. Hey, welcome to the Granada Forum Radio Program, ladies and gentlemen. Today is Friday the 13th. We have a very, very special guest with us, uh, Deborah Tavares. Uh, her website is www.stopthecrime.net. That's www.stopthecrime.net. Also, you can check her out on primary water, uh, primarywater.org. That's primarywater.org for her websites. But uh, www.stopthecrime.net, number one. There you go. Uh, she'll be with us in just a few minutes. We're going to do a couple announcements, and then uh, we'll introduce her and bring her back on. Um by the way, uh, this is Revolution Radio. We are the number one commercial-free, listener-supported internet talk radio station in the world. We are at freedomslips.com. That's freedomslips.com or revolution.radio. That's revolution.radio. And check them out. Okay. By the way, uh, the alternative therapies uh, for uh, the 46th Annual Cancer Control Convention is at uh, September 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, 2018. That's 1st, 2nd, 3rd. 2018 at the Glendale Hilton Hotel in Glendale, California. That's Glendale, California. And uh, let me give you the, the website is www.cancercontrolsociety.com. That's www.cancercontrolsociety.com. Their phone number is 323-663-7801. That's 323 area code, ladies and gentlemen. 663-7801. That's for all the alternative therapies to the cancer control and to whatever uh, the therapies, layer trail and, and uh, all kinds of great things to uh, nutrition, non-toxic um, um, therapies to cancer. So we hope that uh, you check them out and uh, good stuff there at the Cancer Control Society. We will be there live, by the way, on uh, probably the, uh, not the first, but the um, uh, the day before September 1st, the 31st of August. It will be there Friday night. Um, by the way, too, um, we'll also be at the National Health Solution Expo. Uh, we will be filming that one. It will be there live Friday night as well. Uh, September 22nd and 23rd um, at the LAX Marriott at 5855 West Century Boulevard, Los Angeles, California, 90045. That's 5855 West Century Boulevard. Los Angeles, California, 90045 at the LAX Marriott. That's the September 22nd, 23rd for the Natural Health Solution Expo. Uh, phone number for that is 562. That's 562 3479 562 area code 3479 If you go to the com, you probably go right on their website at naturalhealthsolutionexpo.com. Check them out. All right. Uh, by the way, I want to uh, introduce uh, my wonderful co-host, Mr. Nick Pearson. Hi, hey, hey. And my wonderful producer, Richard Kane, who we cannot live without. Hi there. Uh, we'd also like to uh, put out a word for Red, who's doing much better, um, getting much better, and uh, in the Ventura. So, Vent Red, if you're listening, um, thank you for listening and all the stuff you've been doing behind the scenes for all the time we've been on. So, we want to thank you, Red, for that one. Um, uh, right now, uh, we're going to introduce probably Deborah and get her on because she's just full of so many things that we uh, can't believe, but that's why we have her on at least uh, a couple times a month or whenever she wants to come on to this program. We're very grateful to have Deborah Tavares. Her website, again, is www.stopthecrime.net. That's www.stopthecrime.net. Deborah, are you there? Well, Wendy, Nick, yes, I am, and thank you on Friday the 13th for having me on. I'm just going to let it roll because I have so much that I want to share with everyone. I'm going to be pulling in some words I used to use a few years ago, words that many have dropped out of the vocabulary, but we're going to bring them back tonight to tie in the uh, tentacles of the resilient plans and the climate adaptation plans that all of our cities have adopted. And I'm going to be looking at some specific adaptation plans tonight, reading a few things that's in some of these typical plans so that all of you can type in and look at the plan in your city. But I want to read this to everyone first. Um, and I'm, I will tell you who wrote this after I read this. This is a letter to the ruling class. 
You control our world. You've poisoned the air we breathe, contaminated the water we drink, and copyrighted the foods we eat. We fight in your wars, die for your causes, and sacrifice our freedoms to protect us, to, to protect you. You've liquidated our savings, destroyed our middle class, and used our tax dollars to bail out your unending greed. We are slaves to your corporations, zombies to your airways, servants to your decadence. You've stolen our elections, assassinated our leaders, and abolished our basic rights as human beings. You own our property, shipped away our jobs, and shredded our unions. You've profited off of disaster. You've destabilized our currencies and raised our cost of living. You've monopolized our freedom, stripped away our education, and have almost extinguished our flame. We are hit and we are bleeding, but we ain't got time to bleed. We will bring the giants to their knees, and you will witness our revolution. This was written in April of 2011 by Jesse Ventura, a letter to the ruling class. So with that, I want to kick out uh, what the indigenous, indigenous um, Hispanics, Mexicans were doing in Mexico just prior to the recent election. And you can find this, the article is entitled, Indigenous Mexicans Spun Presidential Vote with Blockades and Bulldozers. And here's a quote, an excerpt out of what was going on in Mexico. And this is just in June of uh, 2018, so just last month before the elections. They say this, it's all one big mafia. We ha we're having nothing but pure corruption here in Mexico, and it's proven. Why pretend otherwise? So here's what these people are doing in these towns. Leaders representing tens of thousands of indigenous people have vowed to block the voting in their communities to protest a system that they say has failed them. Mexico is on the verge, and by the way, they did elect the first leftist anti-established president in modern history. But the residents have been destroying campaign signs. They set up blockades to prevent the government from delivering ballots. None of you probably heard this, but now you are. There were many no-go voting zones set up by the indigenous locals who grew avocados and eked out a living on tiny plots. And many, many men, some in cowboy hats, stood, stood vigil near the town's entrances. They laid tree trunks across the road to stop the outsiders from entering. The politicians, they say, haven't done anything besides enrich themselves, and they've left us out, and they've left us behind. We've learned the hard way not to pin our hopes on promises coming from politicians, even the ones that purport they have our best interests in mind. Our roads, schools, and health care have been in the gutter for more than 40 years. Who are, they are seeking, we're now seeking self-rule and turning our backs on mainstream elections. The boycott spread to six additional municipalities affecting dozens of polling stations across 16 towns in, uh, and involving over 50,000 voters. They go on that the growing complaints of the uh, indigenous Mexican, uh, Mexicans appear to track a broader restlessness in the country where widespread political corruption, blood, uh, drug violence, and, and entrenched poverty have fueled discontent. Angry over widespread illegal logging also organized by drug gangs, sparked the unrest in many towns, outraged residents expelled their mayor and their local police force, whom they accused of being complicit. So let's uh, talk about what they say. We can be an inspiration for free and self-determination and a lesson about the rights of native peoples. So this, again, is an article out of Mexico that most likely you did not hear about. Now we're going to talk about how this relates to the United States and our lack of understanding who controls everything. 
our cities, our local governments, our counties, our health departments, the CDC, the WHO, the U.S. Forestry, all of the agencies are corporations, and they've all sold us out. I'm going to read this because I thought that this was just unbelievable. I exhumed this from prior discussions I've had. Seeing it again, I realize how more than ever this is so important to continue to bring back and for all of you to hear. USA Inc. and Earth Inc., corp they are corporate predatory government agencies. They have deceived the global populations. And this is a quote from the Supreme Court Justice John Paul Stevens in 2010. And it's a dissenting opinion in Citizens United versus the FEC. The tragedy of corporate structure is the illusion, the illusion of justice, freedom, and democracy. Quote, corporations have no consciousness, no beliefs, no feelings, no thoughts, and no desires. It's important to understand we are in a reality that is so, so parasitical that we're getting policies, we're getting demands upon us as people that is going to extinguish humanity and all living organisms on the face of this planet. Now we're going to do a brief countdown of the decline of the health, and not only in the United States, but elsewhere as well. We're going to start with 1990, and we're going to go through a few dates with a few paragraphs, and I think you'll be amazed. Again, this is the countdown in decline of health in America, and you can find this on stopthecrime.net. 1990, the U.S. EPA proposed to classify microwaves and other electromagnetic fields as a class B1 probable, probable carcinogen, which is squashed by the White House, and EPA is stripped of all of its radiation labs, and key EPA, EPA scientists were all disciplined. This was back in 1990. Let's take a look at what happened in 1996. The Telecommunication Acts suspended the First Amendment rights, of which we do not have any, to freely discuss health effects from cell towers at city town tower siting meetings buried deep in the landmark bill in section 704 a wisconsin senator inserted a little known clause that prevents local governments from hearing objections or challenges to cell tower placement based on probable health impacts forever in other words this buried landmark bill said it prevents anything to be heard about health effects with the sightings of towers forever. Deborah? Yes, I'm not finished, but go okay. ahead. What? I was just going to ask you, do you know which Wisconsin senator it was? It is in this bill, but let me just keep rolling here, Nick, okay. if you wouldn't mind. Okay, right. this single law has allowed for the uncontested erection of more than 250,000 cell towers in the U.S., while forever ending the public dialogue and critical scientific debate on the possible health impacts from microwaves. Now, this was in 1996. Let's look at 2002. The Freiburger Appeal. More than 3,000 physicians and health practitioners in Europe signed the Freiburger Appeal, which makes the connection between wireless technologies and the sudden explosion of widespread immune dysfunction functions such as headaches, concentration, joint pain, sleep disturbances, heart disease, and neurological disorders. In other words, more than 3,000 physicians in 2002 were talking about these disorders. I want to expand these disorders by having everyone go to the home page of StopTheCrime.net and print the symptoms list because certainly since 2002 and this appeal with more than 3,000 physicians, we are all experiencing all myriads of immune dysfunction and death because our, our cells are being jammed with frequencies and that is exploding. This is all part 
of what we talk about in the genocide plan, which we have up on StompTheCrime.net, and it's also up on Granada Forum. It is called 5G Network, a global network for the calling of mankind. And we're going to talk about that in more context in just a bit. We're going to talk about the suicide application of the global calling um, of mankind and the statistics and the date that they expect to have massive reductions of populations throughout the world. But let's continue with this countdown. In 2006, uh, 17 studies and surveys suggested that at least 3% of the population is electrically magnetically sensitive. Studies and surveys from Sweden, Austria, California, Germany, Switzerland, Ireland, and England revealed that between 1.5% and 135 of population studied showed electrical sensitivity, which includes, again, headaches, sleep disturbances, tendonitis, fatigue, joint pain, blurry vision, heart palpitations, memory loss, confusion, dizziness, and nausea. Remember, this now is in 2006. Now let's talk about 2009. In 2009, the U.S. announces a phase out of incandescent light bulbs implicitly suggesting a mandatory switch to compact fluorescent lights or CFL light bulbs. The CFL bulbs carry up to 50 microwatt pulsed microwave signals, create substantial levels of dirty electricity, which is linked to diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and neurological disorders, plus each light bulb carries 5 milligrams of mercury which is among the most volatile elements known and a confirmed neurotoxin. U.S. government, Inc., fails to warn the population that the cleanup procedure for breaking one of these bulbs requires at least one hour and a trip to a hazardous waste facility. Don't breathe the fumes. Otherwise, call a doctor. 5 milligrams of mercury pollutes 7,000 gallons of water. Now we know people are throwing away their CFL light bulbs in the landfill. We are getting mercury poisoning. This was intended as a slow, soft kill by this illegal representative government that is literally controlling the world. Make no mistake, this is not unintentional. This is intentional. They know exactly what they're doing. I'm going to mention dirty electricity right now. Since this was just discussed in 2009, I'm going to expand upon that, and I'm certainly going to recommend that everybody take a look at the YouTube we have up. Uh, it is called um, LED uh, Lights, a, a Stealth. A silent Weapon. I believe that's the name, Nick. Maybe you could help me look that up and confirm that in a moment. But I would recommend everybody understand the um, LED light bulbs cause weight gain, vision loss, cataract, cataracts. Um, they cause um, childhood behavior disorders, and they cause death. So this is just in the LED lights. Now let's just talk for a moment about dirty electricity, and I'm going to continue this countdown. Uh, dirty electricity will kill you. Electrical pollution is not something we see, smell, taste, or touch. Yet it has become the greatest polluting element in the Earth's environment. And Dr. Sam Milham is a scientist, and he's a whistleblower. And this, he says, is an industry cover-up of toxic facts by the electric utility companies, the cell phone industry, public utility commissions, state health departments, and the FDA. He goes on to tell us, and we know, that the basic electricity on the power lines of electrical power delivered to our homes and other buildings is not increased, is now increased with an added higher frequency polluting electrical voltage and currents, delivering that higher frequency power into the wiring and into the devices in our homes, offices, and schools. Dirty electricity does not need a direct wire connection. 
It connects through the air traveling into the human body from the wiring that carries the power. Once in the human body, these high frequencies cause cancer and many other diseases. Smart meters, cell towers, cell antennas, cell phone chargers, computers, copiers are only a few of the common sources of dirty electricity. Dirty electricity will damage and is damaging the entire human population. Now, if you go to StopTheCrime.net to the Solutions page, you will find the recommendation by many to use stepsers that you can literally plug in to your outlet in your homes and read more about that. This will help return some of the dirty electricity that is coming in off your house wires. Now, I will add a few things to this that we've learned, of course, through the years and have heard in various scientific um, reports. Do not sleep on wire box spring mattresses. Do not have iron headboards or footboards. Be very careful. Women do not wear Victoria's Secrets under wire bras. Conducts electricity. If you're going to have teeth implanted, do not use the metal implants. That conducts electricity in your mouth. Be careful with carrying change in your pockets, wearing bobby pins in your hair, and having belt buckles. Um, many of these are documented in reports, and doctors have been telling us all of these tricks for a long time. We are being hit with weapons for self-destruction. And by knowing what is happening, we can take and, sh and should be making um, defensive um, strategies against this. Again, go to StopTheCrime.net to um, the solutions page. We have some solutions. We are updating that on a regular basis. Now we're going on to the countdown. So uh, we talked again about in 2009, the phase out of CFL light bulbs, LED light bulbs. It's important to understand they're telling us that the LED light bulbs are being phased out. There will not be the um, old time incandescent light bulbs being supported. This is through our Department of Defense. This is all part of the government agency structure that is murdering all of us. Make no mistake, I can't say it any more plainly than that. So now let's look at 2010, and then I'm going to read you something after I read this. In 2010, PG&E and other utilities began to roll out the smart grid. Those are the smart meters with millions of installations of smart meters and smart transmitters in California, New Mexico, New York, and everywhere else. Thousands report immediate health effects. Now, I'm going to read something. I'm continuing with the countdown, but I'm going to be adding um, discussions as I go along. And this is critical because I would recommend that each and every one of you, when you get your electric bill, read the inserts. I'm going to read an insert to all of you right now. This is an insert from Southern California Edison, or Edison International. Again, a, um, a, a utility, they're all run by Rothschild. So here's what they're saying in this insert. This is a recent insert uh, in July of 2018. Here's the title. Reality of year-round fire seasons is a new normal facing California state leaders. Southern California Edison continues to be at the table as ongoing measures and new technology help reduce the risk of wildfires. Now, I want to tell you, any time Rothschild announces they're going to be at the table to help us reduce the very weapons that they're deploying on us, we're in bigger trouble than we thought. So I'm going to continue to read this. This is in the insert, a, a summer hike or walk in the Angeles National Forest just 10 years ago would have been among a dense canopy of dark green trees. Today, that same walk would 
likely include brown, dead, or dying trees, or swaths of emptiness because of the increasing number of wildfires due to factors that include climate change. This, I'm going to add this. This is Rothschild's cover for climate change, weather, weapons in all forms. We're going to go over that in a bit, but I'm going to continue to read. Californians' wildfire season is now year-round, and many, including Governor Jerry Brown, are calling it a new normal. I'm going to add, this is an attack, a weaponized attack by those that control the governments, the monetary system, the voting is rigged, we are controlled. Now I'm going to continue to read. It's a statewide issue that will require statewide solutions and the development of a new regulatory and legislative framework and utilities, including Southern California Edison, are at the table as part of that ongoing solution. I say beware. We're in big trouble. I'm continuing. Fire season is all year round and is now our new normal, said the Edison International President and CEO of Southern California Edison. And it's part of the discussions working on solutions that will allow California to change the way we think about, plan, and respond to wildfires and climate change. We must be nimble and acknowledge that the current structure, listen to this, we must be nimble. Now this is resilience. You've heard me talk about resilience. Now listen. We must be nimble and acknowledge that the current structure is unsustainable and a new approach is needed to mitigate risk, protect citizens, customers, and businesses, and to align public policy to current and future realities. Last year, California experienced a number of devastating wildfires, including many in Southern California. About a quarter of Southern California Edison's 50,000 square mile service territory in central coastal and Southern California is considered to be in areas of high risk for fires. Southern California Edison continues to take steps to help reduce the risk of wildfires, including an aggressive vegetation management program and robust construction standards. We also partner with local agencies in their efforts to evaluate various technologies to help with fire safety throughout Southern California. Some of these technologies include drones to help monitor high fire risk area, weather stations and real time cameras all the time to monitor areas with higher risk for wild fires. Now this is an insert, be warned. This is Rothschild telling you this. I'm going to read you another insert. Now this came out of a garbage bill. Again, read the inserts. They have to tell you. The controllers tell you in advance what they're going to do. The reason that they're telling us what I'm going to read you right now is costs are going to skyrocket in energy costs everywhere, globally. And in January of 2019, the cost for uh, energy through the PG&E billing system, which is right now between 8 and 9 cents a kilowatt, uh, in 2019 from 10 a.m. To, to 8 p.m., costs are going to go up over 55 cents a kilowatt. It's going to become a major cost for, for living in your home. Now here's an insert in your rubbish, at least in our rubbish. China tightens recycling import rules. Did you know that 60% of the recyclable Re, uh, materials collected in the U.S. go to China to be recycled into new products. Historically, China accepted up to 5% non-renewable contaminants. 
garbage or food waste in bales of recyclable materials. And as of March of 2018, the Chinese government is now enforcing a policy called National SWORD. That's S-W-O-R-D, National SWORD, which severely restricts the import of recyclable plastics and paper that China will accept. Bales, and China will only accept bales containing less than 1% contamination and will return any shipments that fail to meet the standard. This is a big change and has had a crippling effect on recycle markets around the globe. We need your help. So this has been in a rub rubbish bill. This is in the process of letting you know that your bills are going to skyrocket on every single level. Now, I want to say this. We can't trust anything we read in the news, not anything. So what we have been attempting to do, because we have contacts in other parts of the world, is to get boots on the ground, real reporting about what is really going on. I'm going to give you an example of some fake news and why we are bringing uh, on to Granada Forum probably every, at least every four to six weeks, contacts that we have out of Ireland, Wales, and the UK that will, bringing, will bring us documents and what is really being experienced there in the context of this global takedown. I'm going to insert this right now. Okay. Um, again, everything is a lie. <laughs> they lie every day. In fact, you can turn on your weather, your radio, your news, you can look in your newspapers, magazines. They lie multiple times every day, every hour, about the very weather that they're purporting. The weather is completely controlled, and they lie. So let's start with that. The weather is massively a deception. Rothschild and company controls the weather, has the greatest shares in Weather Central, and has pulled permits in California for cloud seeding, and so much more. So here's an insider comment about the fake news. They say that it's six major mass media corporations who are all CIA proprietaries for the banksters through Vanguard in Switzerland. It functions as a media. It's a new cartel. So I want you to think of the media as a new cartel. Now here's an example of fake news. We are hearing, and much of this is also very true, but it's seeded with lies. Uh, and what am I referring to? Much of the um, collapse that we're hearing about in Venezuela, where we know the economy is collapsing, the people are fleeing by hundreds of thousands out of the country, causing tremendous refugee impact in Colombia and neighboring uh, countries outside of Venezuela. But let's talk about what's really happening inside Venezuela's markets. This is propaganda versus reality. And I'm going to say that Abby Martin talks to the Venezuelans on the streets of Caracas and investigates the main claim that there's no free press. Did you hear me? Even the people in Caracas know there is no real press. So when is everyone in the United States and elsewhere going to come to that very conclusion? I continue. They know there's no free press because they see it by what's being reported out of their country that is in absolute disrepair. So what is being reported that is not true? They're reporting that there is no food in the supermarkets. It isn't true. I want, to, want you to understand what's happened. Abby Martin goes through uh, using hidden cameras, and she takes you through local grocery stores and the underground black market currency exchange, which is the main source of inflation in Venezuela. I want you to hear that. 
a black market currency exchange. This is Rothschild Rockefeller, the economic hitman teams hitting Venezuela and other countries, including the United States. Let me continue with Venezuela. Abby Martin sat down with an economist in Venezuela, and she found out that more about the nature of the black market and the chronic shortages of food, knowing that world leaders are calling for foreign intervention. And she finds out if the local Venezuelans agree for foreign intervention. The local Venezuelans do not want us there. They don't want us there. What are we doing in Ecuador? Let's take a look. I have some insiders in Ecuador. We traveled to Ecuador in 2017. Let me tell you what the corporations coming out of the United States and elsewhere are doing. They're giving Roundup for free to the farmers in, Vene in Ecuador. They're doing this in Ecuador to kill off the population. The Ecuadorian people once had longevity. They once had areas without chemtrailing, without uh, microwave weapons of cell towers that are now on the hilltops of that country with wireless and smart meters everywhere. Their water supply is being fluoridated in remote areas and villages in Ecuador. The global population is being assaulted, absolutely being assaulted. So I've talked to you about fake news. We're going to cover that on an very, very frequently. I talked to you about the importance of reading the inserts in your bills. Read the inserts in your bills. Now we're going to continue with the countdown. In 2010, Light Squared launches a satellite that will deliver 4G wireless signals to 92% of the United States. I'm going to read that again. In 2010, Light Squared launched a satellite that delivered 4G wireless signals to 92% of the United States during the initial calibration period of the laser-like antenna, creatures with high magnetite for navigation that are highly sensitive to electromagnetic fields such as fish, birds, and crabs unexplainably died in by the thousands. Fish and crabs washed up on the shores in Florida, England, Maryland. Birds fell from the sky in Italy, Arkansas, New Zealand, and many other locations everywhere. Among the 20 species with the highest concentration of magnetite are humans. Humans. Let's talk about what happened in 2011. In 2011, the president announces 98% wireless coverage in the U.S. in the coming years. At least 9 million unknowing electromagnetically sensitive Americas will be immediately affected. This is a plan of genocide. Make no mistake. I'm going to read a couple of other things of vital importance. So we've covered the countdown in the decline of health in the United States and in America. Again, this countdown, you can uh, find it on StopTheCrime.net. Read it for yourself. Investigate some of these things for yourself, but understand that was then. We're now, and the countdown is rapidly counting down. We have a 25% plan, uh, I should say, an 83% reduction planned murder rates in the United States alone, 50% in Australia, and 73%, um, I believe, it is in the UK. Again, to get to this plan, type in 5G network, a global network for the calling of mankind. You will hear the interview that I had with Dr. Bill Deagle about the Intel site 
deagle.com, similar to the spelling of Dr. Bill Deagle's name, but the E and the L are transposed. So I, I'm going to talk about um, suicide because right now I'm touching upon the genocide plan that I've just mentioned. Two of the methods that they anticipate mass genocide occurring is suicide. Now, suicide is enhanced by electromagnetic frequencies in the environment. When you look at the symptoms list on StopTheCrime.net, suicide, among many aspects of debilitating uh, life systems, um, is in and on that symptoms list. People are going to suffer. People are not going to feel well. And now what do we see? I want all of you to pay attention. In the news, in the newspapers, you're going to hear about the idea that suicide should become an acceptable course of action. Okay? Suicide should not be considered an S word. Now, why am I talking about this? Well, I've been noticing... Uh, suicide rates being discussed in the media lately, uh, that the CDC has even talked about increased suicide levels among farmers in particular and other groups as well. You can look this up for yourself. But just a few days ago, there was a screening of a movie here in Northern California. It was diabolical. And it was the screening of the movie called The S Word, S for suicide, The S Word. Let's talk about what this movie revealed when we saw it. First of all, the idea that, um, that suicide should be an acceptable form in society. In other words, it should be now a norm. They're teaching the acceptability of suicide so that none of us notice that people are so despondent they want to kill themselves. They want to kill themselves. Are any, is anybody asking about the policies and the drivers in society that are creating the reasons to make suicide more common? No, but you will now that you've heard this discussion you're going to want to bring the policies forth, and we're going to talk about that more in a moment as well. When we talk about the policies, about um, increased lack of identity, increased lack of self-worth, look at the disconnect in our society with the frequency devices that are captivating our attention and eliminating human dialogue. You're hearing me right now. I am not a computer. I am, not, uh, I am not AI. I'm a human being. I'm talking to you. You're hearing the tonality. We're void of that now. The policies of downsizing our houses, rationing the water, the food supply, con say, telling us that rural country living is sprawl and unsustainable is causing massive displacement and in that suicide uh, methods of which they anticipate massive kill-offs by the year 2025, the two components are suicide and the lack of people's psychological ability to um, regain stability after they've been relocated from the rural country farming areas into the big cities. Now let's make a few comments about that. The big cities are going to have massive um, Wi-Fi hotspots, they already do. Massive increased um, technologies piggybacked with 5G. Uh, we, they have the smart meters. Again, cell towers, um, antennas. Uh, we're seeing now the wireless water meters being connected. All of these things, when all tied together, and there are many, we're talking also about Comcast. We're talking about frequencies being delivered in cities that will not allow our neurological functioning to continue. So we have to talk about the Rambo chip that they used in Vietnam. They experimented with that. That was wires in the neck in Vietnam. Let's talk about pulsed magnetic frequencies in our brains that are creating thoughts in our heads 
that are not our own. That's what these frequencies are doing. People are going to get thoughts in their brains of suggestions of suicide. And we have increasing taxes, increasing um, uh, costs for everything. We have increasing massive homelessness. We have bad roads. We're being charged insurance for miles traveled, eliminating our sense of value and creating healthy emotional outcomes. High school debt. We have um, inability to pay our loans back, reduced jobs, high rents. Certainly, all of this is going to cause for people's abilities of self-doubt and lack of self-worth. When you read the document, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, and you read some of the pages towards the end of that document, you will read ways in which they are creating self-doubt. This is going to be in alignment with genocide. Now, I've read this many, many times. I'm going to read it right now because I think it's extremely important with the understanding of frequencies and the thoughts that frequencies deliver in our heads. And this has been ongoing. We have many YouTubes up. We've talked about targeted individuals in the past. Myron May, M -A, um, Myron May was a targeted individual. Type that in. He has a three-part YouTube about his planned suicide. You will hear why he felt that suicide was the only option. Listen to part one and part two of Myron May's suicide YouTube as a targeted individual and understand why he decided he could no longer survive. This is utterly important. I want to underscore Myron May wanted this to get out. We're helping him get this out. He died. He died wanting you to hear how he suffered and what was done to him with gang stalking and the use of frequencies and electromagnetic uh, tectonic or electromagnetic frequencies in the use of debilitating him and the lack of sleep that he suffered. Myron May. I want to read this to all of you right now. The following excerpt comes from a lecture out of New York City. I quote, Therefore, in 1995 will be the year where massive doses of electronic mind control programming, thought intrusion, and brain biogenetic manipulations will commence in large scale. These projects are no longer experimental. They are fully operational Field testing is over. The entire arsenal of frequencies will be unloaded on the USA, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and Mexico as part of stage one of the first protocol. And the operations are called Woodpecker, Buzzsaw, Videodrome, and Subliminals, Sonic Pulses, Holograms, visions, voices, and strange psychokinetic phenomenon. Beware. Now, this is a solution. Everyone, listen. Here is a solution. Beware of TVs, computers, movies, radios, and phones. Also, books, magazines, newspapers, Printed advertisements and posters will contain encrypted, hidden, subliminal holograms. In addition to the obvious programming of commercial consumerism and marketing reason behind all the subliminals and electronically compressed information in movies, commercial television, Hollywood videos, radio and telephones, and now encrypted and printed matter um, affect the brain's neural networks and functions through select frequencies and their harmonics to diminish 
our will, the will of, of individuals and creativity of individuals. Furthermore, the protocols intended to give, in essence, the commands, commands of obey the law. Do not question authority. Government is your God. Do as you are told. And God is talking to you. Also, erratic thoughts of anger, fear, depression, wanton sexuality are also included. This causes utter confusion in individuals who don't know where these strange thoughts are coming from. Now you do. You have been told it was coming. I'm going to bring back the Operation Crimson Mist right now. Type in Operation Crimson Mist. Understand what was delivered in Central Africa in the mid-90s that started the Rwanda genocide. Understand how frequencies and microwaves were used to cause the slaughtering of over a million Tutsis, Africans, in Central Africa. The absolute horrific rapes and murdering of young women and little girls and babies. The cutting up and the berserk, insane behavior that was created by microwaves used by the military and the CIA in Central Africa. Look up Operation Crimson Mist. Now, I want to say a few other things about this. We're hearing um, a lot in the news right now about hate crimes, increased hate crimes throughout the country. I want everyone to understand this is being identified predominantly in the large cities. Why? Frequencies. Frequencies. This is what is happening. This is why you are being moved into areas of compliance with frequencies. Make absolutely no mistake. We are being rounded up and we are being put in a frequency environment in these cities. Now I'm going to jump into something else real fast because I hope most of you have watched the YouTube we have up entitled Cooking of Humanity. I want to talk about that before the top of the hour. And I want to tell you why we did that interview with Barry Trower. It's important to understand we went up to Portland, Oregon to interview Barry Trower because of a specific document that our research team found um, on the whitehouse.gov website. It's about a 13-page document, and it scared the heck out of all of us. So we took this up to Barry Trower. It is embedded under the links of the YouTube, but I'm going to talk about the rest of that story now. Again, the cooking of humanity was part of the story. That 13-page that document was part of the President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, and it was January 20th of 2012. And in that document, we saw and found a map of the United States. And around the perimeter of all of the states that bordered the ocean, we're talking Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Gulf of Mexico, we saw an array of frequencies. And what we, what we discovered was these were psychotronic weapons positioned for mass mind control. But we discovered more, and this was not part of the interview of the cooking of humanity. I'm going to talk about that with you now. What we discovered was the intention of quantum computers, which is mind theft, invasion of the human brain with AI, controlling our specific thoughts and emotions, and directing physical actions into unsuspecting human beings. The map shows the end of free will as we have known it. 
information from the White House website. This was a real map. This image, again, was from the White House website, and the technologies and methodologies are described in the NASA Future of War Circa 2001, and additional comments are contributed to this. Now, I want you to know who was involved in the science and technology. I see that we're coming up at the top of the hour. I'm going to finish this on the other side of the break. Sit down, because you need to sit down. All right, stay tuned, everybody. We'll be back here in a couple of minutes. Right back. Hold on. Hey, welcome back to the Granada Forum Radio Program, ladies and gentlemen, with my co-host Nick Pearson and my producer Richard Kane. We have an incredible guest with us, as you know, David Tavares, and we're going to put her right back on at www.stopthecrime.net. And that's www.stopthecrime.net. Deborah, are you there? Yes, Wendy, thank you again. Um, Prior to the break, we were talking about the Cooking of Humanity interview that uh, my husband and I did in Portland, Oregon with uh, Barry Trower. And uh, we went up there, as I was saying, um, with a specific document in hand. We actually uh, were able to get that to Barry when he was in the UK. He doesn't do anything wirelessly. And we were able to get that to friends uh, that handed it to him, and he did a, a short radio show out of the UK on this 13-page uh, document from USA Inc., the White House, to enslave us with frequencies and mind control. Uh, when he flew to Portland, Oregon, we had the opportunity to go up there, and that uh, ensued in the YouTube, The Cooking of Humanity. But I am telling you the back story, because that was never completely revealed in that YouTube. And we were talking about the map in that document of the United States and the frequencies that surround the United States from all of the um, abutment of water. We're talking about all the states along the Pacific Coast, uh, all the states in the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, etc., and the Atlantic. And you see the frequencies around the perimeter of that map. These are psychotronic weapons for mass mind control. So I'm going to tell you who was involved in this deployment. And this is in the White House website document. The White House Spectrum Management Team included, and does include, Google Inc., Microsoft Corporation, Stanford and Harvard Universities, Virginia Tech, UC Berkeley, National Telecommunications and Information Association, the FCC, and the NSA. So now we're going to talk about one of the comments that was um, made in the process of looking at what this uh, document revealed. And at the time that this comment was made, it was a contribution uh, by some investigators, and they were seeking added contributions uh, from other people as well. Anyone else could have commented during this time. But I'm going to read you what a group of investigators concluded as part of the weaponized system that this document discussed. Um, Now, they're saying that they are aware of the NASA war document. So for those of you that may not be aware of the NASA war document, go to stopthecrime.net and type in NASA war document. I'm going to read a few things from that document before I continue with what this um, group um, discussed with this assault on all of us through the White House um, and through the um, energy and technology departments that are headed up by the larger corporations that actually control the world. But in the NASA war document on page 50, it says, effects of low power microwaves, and they refer to the U.S. Army document out of Walter Reed. You can go to stopthecrime.net. Please type into the resource document tab, Walter Reed Army document. That is the document that is being referred to in the NASA war document. They knew, they knew and know that there will be behavioral performance detriments. 
they know and they knew that there would be seizures. They knew and they know that the low-powered microwaves will cause gross alteration in brain function, increases in brain blood flow, and death. They knew and they know. Make no mistake. Another aspect of the document, um, and I will say this, on page 66, they tell us it's a PowerPoint, and this is what it says. This is the NASA, NASA war document. Increasingly critical are human limitations and human downsides. Humans are too large, too heavy. Humans are too tender, too slow physically and mentally. We require huge costs. Humans have rapidly decreasing to negative value added. That's on page 66. On page 67, they talk about robotics in the large and how robots save lives, enhance affordability, redefine risk and threat to the environment, and enhances effectiveness. They say on page 4 in this document, make no mistake about this, what I'm going to read to you now. This is a quote on page 4. The presentation is based in all cases upon existing data, trends, analysis, and technology. And in parentheses they say, no pixie dust. This is about robots, cyborgs, and humans. They also talk about on page 93 of the NASA war document. And then I'm going to go back into this map. They talk about how they will exploit the CNN syndrome. That is fake news, folks. This is fake news. They talk about it. How they will sink carriers via swarm attacks. Cap this was also, I want to add, a PowerPoint pre uh, presented by the chief NASA scientist, Dennis Bushnell, out of the NASA Lang Langley Research Center a couple of months prior to 9-11. He also went on to say, again, exploit the CNN syndrome on page 93, sink carriers via swarm attacks, capture, torture Americans in living color on prime time, terror attacks within CONUS, that's the continental United States, C-O-N-U-S, using binary biologicals, critical infrastructure, take down with an EMP, electromagnetic pulse, RF against the brain. This is on page 93. They go on, serious psi war, collateral damage and exploitation. This is what is happening. So the only reason I went over a few of these pages and points right now was because this is what was discussed in the discussion of this map from the cooking of humanity. Now I will continue with the rest of the story. These people that contributed again to the map from the whitehouse.gov website said they understood the NASA war document. So I've given you some illustrations so that you can look at that for yourself. Um, I have got many YouTubes up discussing the NASA war document. So I think you can just type that in. You'll hear lots of discussions about that. Um, you can also download it from StopTheCrime.net as well. Then they go on to say that they also understand the Silent Weapon for Quiet Wars document. Now, if you don't, you need to. So all of you, if you do not and have not downloaded Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, you need to. In order to understand the conversation of our reality, you need to understand Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document. So now here's what the contributors now have to add to that map. They say that they know the digital Gwyn signals, and they know without a doubt that the specific harmonics that are needed for mind control come from the digital Gwyn signals and other signals. And then they go on to tell us this. And this is pertaining to the map. Now envision the map of the United States as an example with frequencies around the perimeter of all the states that abut the oceans in the Gulf of Mexico. And then they go on to tell us this. Do you know what the X factor 
to their pulsed ELF. ELFs are e extremely low frequencies for mind control happens to be. So they're saying, do you know what the X factor for the extremely low frequencies for mind control happens to be? It's something called negative oxygen ions. So they're saying, let me try to sum it up in a sixth grade language. The oxygen we breathe is composed of two oxygen molecules bound together. If the oxygen molecule is stripped of electrons, it becomes positively charged. Conversely, if there are extra electrons attached to the oxygen, it becomes negatively charged. Study after study after study on this largely by DARPA, Stanford Research Institute, and CIA mind control programs during the 60s and 70s, that's the 1960s and the 1970s, showed that humans breathing negative oxygen ions have markably better cognitive reasoning skills, are much less likely to be mind controlled on a massive scale, and more importantly, are much more physically healthy. Negatively charged oxygen ions are vitally important for healthy humans. Now, they go on to tell us, you must understand that the primary source of negative oxygen ion generation is the seashore, is the seashore. The waves of the salty surf crashing onto the coastline rocks and sand 24 hours a day generate massive negative ions of oxygen, which in turn supplies the entire nation with what can best be described as good vibrations. Prevailing winds then circulate the negatively charged oxygen ions throughout the country. What strikes me immediately, they tell us, is the fact that these digital wave signals as shown on the map are specifically only heavily concentrated along America's coastlines and nowhere else. It happens to be, as far as they are concerned, electromagnetically strip ions from the air. This group that researched this paper said they can see no other reason for what the White House, Google, and the other institutions are doing. The net result will, to them, simply result in a much more chemically depressed national population, a much more easily mind-controlled nation. And they conclude it by saying, nefarious as hell. So you've heard the rest of the story and why we traveled up to talk to Barry Trower about that document, which sadly was not portrayed in this light with Barry Trower. You have heard the rest of the story now. So go to Cooking of Humanity. You can click on this document for yourself and you can see this map. There are solutions. Why do you suppose that the coastlines globally find and have the highest levels of populations? Because people have always felt better. Why are the coastlines being attacked simply to create depression and more easily capable of all of us being mind controlled? So I can say to you, we are in a nefarious, outrageous reality, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how our countries, our cities, our local governments, and all of our agencies sold us out. I'm going to refer to a word I used to use a lot and haven't, but I'm going to bring that back into the conversation right now because I certainly would request that everybody type this in and look at ICLEI which is I-C-L-E-I. -E These are international corporations. ICLEI 
um, stands for um, International Council for Local Environmental Initiatives, and this is a global plan. Now, I found a document uh, that I must have picked up during one of the um, talks uh, that Rosa Corey gave here in Northern California. Rosa wrote Behind a Green Mask. And um, I picked this up. It was from the 2009 ICLE webpage showing the connection between ICLE and the United Nations. And um, this has since been removed from the ICLE website. So what is it that has been removed? I'm going to read that to you right now. It's the Local Action 21, Moving from Agenda to Action. During the local government session at the World Summit in Johannesburg, South Africa in August of 2002, local government leaders from around the world, as well as representatives from the United Nations Development Program, United Nations Environmental Programs, UnHabitat, UnHabitat, and the World Health Organization, WHO, and Pacific Gas and Electric, Rothschild, okay, joined ICLE in launching Local Action 21 as the next phase of the local agenda that will support local governments' ongoing efforts in response to Agenda 21 the Rio Conventions. So I'm going to now go on into what this looks like and how it's emerging and what we face. And there are solutions. You simply must not, you must not do what is being concealed in plain sight. You must not habitat, go in and move into the cities, number one. Okay? But let's look at the Wildlands Project map. Again, you can go to StopTheCrime.net, type in Wildlands Project map. This is where human access is denied. You will see this map. It was a biodiversity treaty which was mandated by the United Nations. And the United States adopted this because we're run by the United Nations and the international bankers. The Climate Action Plan is a plan to control all people, all property, all regulations. It will exact fines and penalties. It will require and has created conservation easements and all to reduce CO2 emissions, greenhouse gas emissions. Now here in Sonoma County, we have a very industrious plan to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. They want to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions 25% below 1990 levels by 2015. We didn't make that. They claim we didn't make that because of the fires. But now they're fast um, putting this up on us. Now let's talk about what the Wildlands Project is about and uh, what they're doing. And this is why I would recommend everybody look at this map for yourselves. Type in, again, StopTheCrime.net, Wildlands Project Map. Now, why I am recommending that you go to Stop the Crime and type that map in is because the map was originally created by someone else, and we've reversed the colors so that you can see uh, the limited uh, locations throughout the United States where humans are allowed access. So um, Michael Kaufman created the original map. Michael did an amazing job by bringing that forth and putting that out there. This is the same map with the colors reversed so you can identify the human settlement zones. So let's talk about the Wildlands Project and the goals of the project. The goal of the Wildlands Project is to set aside over 50% of North, the North American continent, or Turtle Island, as they call it, as wild land for the preservation of biological diversity. The Wildlands Project map and the project seeks to do this by creating res reserve networks across the continent. 
and reserves are made up of the following. Cores created from public lands, such as national forests and parks. This is why you can see the enormity and the size and scale of the national parks. I want all of you to also know that the U.S. forestry is part of the takedown of the Rock, Rothschild Rockefeller plan. It's all part of the takedown. The other aspect of the preserves are to create buffer zones, often created from private land adjoining the cores to provide additional protection. So they're taking private lands, we'll talk about that more, but also creating corridors of a mix of public and private lands, usually following along rivers and wildlife migration routes. Now let's talk about rivers. I'm throwing this in right now because I happen to talk a lot about primary water. Uh, for this exact moment, you're going to hear the best news that I'm going to be talking about tonight, and that's to understand we do not have limited water resources. Water can be found everywhere, and rivers are very, very uh, indicative of where fault lines and structures are, and that's why they don't want us near the rivers because we would soon realize their game and we could access water. I was just talking to someone a few days ago, and I shall digress from the map conversation for a moment, but a Rotary Club sponsored a drilling for water in Kenya. This village was remote, and the women of the village spent hours every single day with jugs on their head going to a polluted um, water pond that had dead carcasses in it of animals that were getting water there, uh, lots of poisonous and dangerous uh, animals, croc crocodiles or alligators that would attack um, the women as they would try to draw from this polluted water um, pond, bring this polluted water back to their village. That's what these people were drinking. A Rotary Club hired someone to go and find primary water. Again, go to primarywater.org. Understand exactly what I'm talking about. Here's what happened. They went to a village in Kenya. They went to a high area above the village, kind of a crest of a mountain, and they found a a spring. They accessed, they created the spring. Um, and the reason that they created the spring and brought the water up at the top of the mound is because the village had no electricity. There was no way that if they ex accessed the primary water closer to the village that they could pump it up out of the ground. They didn't have the electricity. Soon they were going to get electricity, but for the time being, and in fact, it took them three to four years to get electricity. But they were able to access um, water at the top of the hill. They were able to get it to flow at 50 gallons a minute. That is substantial. Into a holding tank. That village was able to access water until finally they were able to get the electricity there. And they got many, many hundreds of gallons of water. Out of, that, uh, out of that fracture because the earth makes water continuously. It is a renewable from hydrogen and oxygen. Please learn the water facts. Watch our YouTube, Primary Water Exp Explained. Now I'm going to go back to the discussion of the Wildlands Project. And not only what the United States is doing through this, but what every other country throughout the planet is doing also. So the primary characteristics of the core areas are that they are large, uh, 25 million acres plus in the United States. And this will allow for little, if any, human use. In other words, really think of it as the Hunger Games. That's what this looks like. So it goes on to say the primary characteristics of the buffers are that they allow for limited human use. 
so long as they are managed with native biodiversity as a preeminent concern. Listen to this. Moral and ethical guidelines for the Wildlands Project are based upon a philosophy of deep ecology. Deep ecology. Here are the eight-point platform for deep ecology, and this is how they summarize it. All life, human and non-human, have equal value. We're talking about rocks, too. Resource consumption above what is needed to supply vital human needs is immoral. I'll read that again. Resource consumption above what is needed to supply vital human needs is immoral. Human population must be reduced. Western civilization must radically change present economic, technological, and ideological structures. Believers have an obligation to implement the necessary changes. The Wildlands Project itself is supported by hundreds of groups working towards its long-term implementation. The Wildlands Project has received millions upon millions of dollars in support from wealthy and private corporate foundations, such as the Ted Turner Foundation, Patagonia, and the W. Alton Jones Foundation, the Lundhurst Foundation, and many, many other takedown foundations. So now let's talk about the deception in your local governments the tragedy of this predatory system, and what is additionally occurring. When I was um, studying and finding out the effects of the smart grid as a deployment program globally, I found something some time ago that I'm going to read to you now. It's going to explain the resilient cities in a way that will make better sense because it's all surfacing now. The level of technologies that are going to be created in our cities through Google, uh, this explains. In the beginning, when this was discovered and I revealed this, I don't know that many people fully understood what this was, and now it's extremely interesting. Um, I found this on a Carnegie Mellon website. And um, it is called PSII, stands for Pennsylvania Smart Infrastructure Incubator. And this was uh, backed by Carnegie Mellon Engineering, Bombardier, which is out of um, Canada, and IBM. And this is a mission statement. And I'm not going to deviate from this one word. I'm going to read it exactly as this mission statement was revealed when I found it. Here we go. Mission statement, revolution in our infrastructure. Pennsylvania's companies and institutions have a hidden secret. They are leading a revolution in our infrastructure. We want to help expose that secret to the world. Tomorrow's infrastructure will blend traditional physical infrastructure, parentheses, transportation and transit systems, buildings, pipes, and power grid, concrete and steel, end of parentheses, with cyber infrastructure, parentheses, computers, networks, and sensors in ways that are now just emerging. Pennsylvania has a wealth of companies, universities, and institutions that are inventing many of these emerging technologies that will build and rebuild, rebuild the world's transportation, civil, manufacturing, and other infrastructure. We will bring these organizations together 
to leverage and highlight this hidden secret to help make Pennsylvania a visible leader in these critical emerging technologies. These technologies will also need a new generation of employees to design, operate, and maintain these new cyber physical infrastructure systems. And we will help Pennsylvania be a leader in educating these workers to meet the demand. The PSII, again that means Pennsylvania Smart Infrastructure Incubator, will be an important step towards exposing this secret. This is a mission statement. Now I hope you heard in this mission statement about the cyber technologies that are now emerging. I hope you heard about the resilient cities, the use of 5G as a backbone, and the other types of technologies that Google is deploying in our cities for mass mind control and obedience and literally dictating and creating the very thoughts in our mind. That's what this is all about. I also found this. And I found this to be interesting back then, and I'm going to read this to you now. I found this on the Harvard Kennedy School Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs website. Again, Harvard Kennedy School Belfer Center for Science and International Affairs. This is on StopTheCrime.net. It's entitled Geoengineering Policy Research fellowships. Okay, I'm going to tell you what they said, and here we go. Quote, geoengineering is the deliberate large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate that might be used to particularly offset the climate risks caused by emissions of greenhouse gases. Solar remediation management poses complex challenges for climate policy, and for global governance more generally, not least because it appears that most individual states could readily use these tools to alter the global climate unilaterally. Geoengineering policy research fellows will be expected to work in collaboration with facility at um, Harvard Kennedy School along with international organizations such as the Solar Remediation Management Governance Initiative to improve understanding of the options for governance of geoengineering. In other words, getting other um, implementations of controlling the weather discussed with other governments. This is what this is saying. They say, re required education experience and skills. Applications for these research fellowships are welcome from recent recipients of PhDs or equivalent. The ideal candidate will have academic or professional experience of three to five years minimum. Candidates will have excellent skills in presenting complex material to a wide range of audiences and will be able to take initiative in interacting with other researchers and policy makers. Candidates should hold a PhD in engineering, the physical sciences, public policy, economics, political science, or related field, with a clear focus on environmental resource or energy policies. Practical experience with international public policy would be a substantial asset. These candidates holding Technical master's degrees that have extensive experience will also be considered. Candidates must have relevant language skills. Selected fellows will be working under the supervision of Professor David Keith, K-E-I-T-H, and will be expected to produce at least one publishable article 
present his or her findings before internal and external audiences and play a subsistent role in the dissemination of process of any findings, which could include interactions with policy makers. This is a geoengineering fellowship application requirement and request. Now, I was stunned when I found this. Many of you that are listening may not believe that the entire weather on this planet is controlled. It is. It's now time to understand that the media is false news. Again, I started the show by telling you all that the weather reporting is all false. It's all false. So let's talk about what is additionally occurring. I've talked about resilient cities. I was recently on a conference call with someone that said they were in a a state and they were able to hold off UN Agenda 21 policies in their local town. Well, I can tell you that I know of nowhere that has been able to hold off any of these policies. I can tell you that when it looked like um, Sebastopol, for example, was able to slow down the deployment of smart meters, it was a it was a predetermined paper through Vanderbilt University that told the utility companies how to psychologically get around the pushback of the deployment of the smart meters. I've had this Vanderbilt University PSYOPs method in how to handle all of us on StopTheCrime.net for a long time. Recently, we found such an exact thing on the Brookings Institute about the deployment of 5G and small cells, how to get around it. I'll add this right now because this is important to understand what has happened here in Northern California. This is going to happen most likely in all cities across the country and become the lawless deployment everywhere else as well. But what we have, dis- what we have discovered is that the wireless small cells um, that are being deployed as the beginnings of the 5G network deployment, um, Verizon is working with PG&E. Now, Verizon is also run by Rothschild, Rockefeller, etc. They're all in, um, uh, in cahoots. And PG&E and Verizon is now working together. Uh, they're bypassing the city by deploying the small cells on the utility poles. I want to explain. Um, here in Northern California, there was a study session at the local town meeting. The cities are now, of course, they're all incorporated. They can't serve us. They're only implementing UN Agenda 21 policies through grants. You have to all understand that. We have been already taken over, and our cities have allowed this. And in areas where we've been hit by weather weapons, it's getting extremely severe. They're rolling in the resilient cities and the idea that we must move into these cities, um, and it is very rapid, very rapid. So I want to talk about the meeting here in Northern California in Santa Rosa where we were hit with that horrific fire in October of 2017. And here's a quote from the study session in Santa Rosa. The city has, is lacking the ability to stop the installations on the California Public Utility Commission's controlled PG&E joint poles. The city has only been able to pause the deployment of the small cells on the city streetlights. So the cities have no power, no jurisdiction over the deployment of these mind control frequencies on Rothschild's utility poles. They go on to say that the wooden poles are limited by PG&E. They go on to say that they can't stop the rollout of these small cells on those poles. It's important to also know that your cities get money for allowing the deployment of the small cells. 
Santa Rosa, for example, was going to get $350 per year per cell. That's a great incentive for cities that are bankrupt, cities that have been taken over by Rothschild and that are being exploited. They go on to say that they're anticipated, this is the city of Santa Rosa, they were anticipating the deployment of 200 small cells and the annual revenue from that would have been $70,000. And over a 15-year period, that revenue would have been a million dollars. They go on to say that the city-owned poles are typically metal streetlight poles, and the, um, the city put a pause on that only because of the aesthetics, how the, the small cells were going to look on the streetlights. Now remember, I read to you early on about the law that allows the deployment of frequencies without health effects being allowed to be used in the conversation. That is still in effect. No one can oppose the smart meters or the 5G or any of the frequencies that are mind-controlling frequencies causing cell death along the way of our demise. Can any of this be stopped because of health effects? How insane is this. They go on to say that um, there's no encroachment permit included. And then they showed on the overhead during the city meeting the uh, deployment of the uh, Verizon's wireless sightings in San Francisco. I can tell you that San Francisco is nowhere where anyone can live for any length of time. When you look at this map, it is horrific, absolutely horrific. And what I want to tell you is this. This was included in the overhead presentation, and, um, and this was before uh, the decision January 28th of 2016. Now, this was in part of a current presentation in 2018. So I, the overhead was referring to a Public Utilities Commission in the state of California uh, back in 2016. Decision record, regarding the applications of the, com of the commissioners, uh, Commission's right-of-way rules to commercial mobile radio service carriers. Here's what they said. Verizon has right-of-way to access rights per the modified right-of-way decision of 2016. By way of this decision, PG&E, again, that's Rothschild, PG&E is mandated to provide access to its poles for pole top antennas belonging to Verizon. I'm going to read that again. By the way, of the Public Utility Commission's decision, Pacific Gas and Electric is mandated to provide access to its poles for pole top antennas belonging to Verizon. The process involves Verizon submitting an application and construction drawings, and pole loading calculations are also performed to ensure structural integrity. Verizon is solely responsible for constructing compliance and for retaining any jurisdictional permitting required. PG&E does not get to choose which poles may be encumbered with an antenna on the basis of property value or aesthetic reasons. So. Let me break that down. PG&E is Rothschild. PG&E is working with the telecom communication agencies also via Rothschild. They are being given a clear and free pass to radiate all of us with mind control frequencies within our community, just like Big Pharma is not held accountable and has no liability at all. The same thing with vaccinations. You've heard that. This is part of the decision 
This is a global assault. Now, you may hear me referring to this, uh, what we saw in Santa Rosa in Northern California, but this is happening throughout the world. Now, let's talk about some of the words that you need to become familiar with. I'm going to remind you, these are in the city uh, documents that have been approved to take away every aspect of your freedom, including your minds. They're taking your minds, not just your bodies, not just reducing your water usage, your consumption, not just taking over your homes with wireless technologies of faucets and shower heads through the smart grid with your required reduction of energy with the use of electricity. Also, they're eliminating gas. I need to repeat that. These are in these plans, and this is happening now. I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute. You're going to be astounded. But I've got to wrap this up. Um, and I've got some good news uh, in the next, probably in about two weeks. So I want everybody to stay tuned to me on Granada Forum. You'll hear them announce some dates when I'm on. You're going to be hearing some good news. You're going to be hearing lots of, of ways in which we can prevent uh, some of these intrusions upon our brains and on our bodies. And uh, only by knowing will you understand the ways to mitigate some of these assaults. But let me now get into some of these agendas. Find them in your cities. Type in the name of your city, please. Uh, for example, I can type in Santa Rosa, California, uh, resilient cities, or I can type in climate action plans, and there they are. I'm going to talk about a plan that I found out of Nashville. So these are words you must understand are part of the takedown, the way in which we have been sold out. This is some of the vocabulary. These are sustainable development expressions, and they're used throughout all of their documents. Understand this when you hear fossil fuels. Okay, anytime you hear fossil fuels, that's a lie. It's just like the idea of running out of water. Our petroleum never came from fossil fuels. And I can tell you right now, they're getting ready to reduce our access to petroleum. Very, very soon, this is a massive global disruptor that is getting ready to happen. And what they're going to say is, well, We've been telling you we're running out. It's fossil fuels. No, it's not. Remember this. Please remember what has just been said right now. This is going to be explained further in, in other shows. But some of the words and expressions, environment, new economy, equity, consensus, affordable housing, friends of, Friend, friends of anything. anything, anytime you hear friends of the environment, friends of the climate, friends of the sea, whatever it is, that's all part of the new sustainable speak that is intended to take you down. The word action, the word protect, these are out of these documents, okay? Preserve, very important word, preserve. Quality of life, benefit of all, sanctuary. There is... No. Social justice, watershed, facilitator, traffic calming, best management practices. You see that everywhere in their documents. Outcome-based education. This is a takedown of our education. Endangered species. I'm going to blow through this because I want to get into this Nashville document. Endangered species, invasive species, restoration, public-private partnerships, common good, regional, collaborative, interdisciplinary, stakeholder, international um, baccalaureate, school to work, uh, historic preservation, vision, sustainable medicine. These are just a few of the words. So now let's talk about what someone said. Someone recently said, well, I was able to stop UN Agenda 21 policies when I lived in this city. And they weren't rolling it out. 
Well, I'll tell you what our research team did. We went to that city and we looked to see if this um, sustainable development, if this uh, UN Agenda 21 or resilient was held back, and it wasn't. So don't fool yourselves. Any of you that think you can go before your city council and stop this, you are being misinformed. Anyone that tells you that is leading you off the cliff. What you can do by going to city councils is letting everyone know that you know that they are a corporation working to bring in UN policies by grants. That is the best form of action that you can take at the cities and hold up the plans and read a few of the key points so that other people that may be sitting in these meetings or may watch these meetings at home understand that you get the fact that your cities are operating as an economic hitman team for Rothschild and Rockefeller. Make absolutely no mistake. We've all been sold out. So let's look at this building resilience, climate, uh, a climate adaption plan out of Nashville. Let's look at this. First of all, let's look at partial funding of the document. It was provided by the U.S. Department of Transportation and Federal Highway Administration and Federal Trans Transit Administration the Tennessee Department of Transportation, and local government members of the Nashville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. You can look this up for any city, anywhere. I'm going to read just a few things. In 2015, the Model Forest Policy Program, the Cumberland River Compact, and the Nashville Area Metropolitan Planning Organization came together to create a climate adaption plan for, these are the counties now in that area, Davidson County, Wilson, Williamson, Summer, Rutherford, Robinson, Robertson, and Murray counties in Middle Tennessee. Development of the plan came about because all parties recognized the critical need for local community and regional resilience against the impacts of climate change by protecting forests and water resources. This climate adaptation plan for Nashville area region represents the results of a regional team effort, deep and broad information gathering, critical analysis, and thoughtful planning. The Nashville area took a local leadership role to engage with the Climate Solutions University Forest and Water Strategic Program to lead the region towards climate resilience with an adaptation plan to address the local climate risks and fits local conditions and culture. The achievement was made possible by the guidance and the coaching of programs created by the partnerships of stakeholders. The goal was to empower rural and urban underserved communities to become leaders in climate resilience using a cost-effective distance learning program. Let me just break this down. They're, they're acknowledging in this document the um, uh, Chris, Chris, Krisky, K R E S. A-R-E-S-G-E Foundation and other funders. Now, this is Rothschild, Rockefeller, other foundations funded. This is what has happened in all of our cities. So let's talk about what they're talking about. They're talking about risk management because of the deployment of weather weapons. Now, I read to you the geoengineering policy fellowships uh, out of Harvard Kennedy School telling you what geoengineering is. I'll tell you again, I thought this was the most simply stated goal of geoengineering I'd ever heard. Quote, out of the Kennedy, Harvard Kennedy School, geoengineering is the deliberate, large-scale manipulation of the Earth's climate. Deliberate, large-scale manipulation. So now they have got new, mar new markets being created off of a falsified reality of weather control throughout the world. 
Now, I will tell you, when we traveled in 2017 to Ecuador and we traveled to Russia, we witnessed firsthand the overhead chemtrailing programs in full swing, even over Russia. Now, you can type in plans all over the world with these resilient plans anywhere, and you will find them. Now, um, I went over a little bit of the plans. I wanted to jump into a couple of um, breaking news items right now. Um, I want to tell you right now uh, that Elon Musk has partnered with uh, Rothschild. Uh, Elon Musk is working with Pacific Gas and Electric to build the largest battery um, that has ever been built uh, in the United States. And let's talk about what this is. This is literally uh, the end of coal. Coal is out. So let's talk about this. Um, PG&E and Tesla team up uh, on big batteries. You'll find this. This was a um, San Francisco Chronicle um, article and many other articles that I found. I found this also. PG&E, again, that's Rothschild, Pacific Gas and Electric, proposes world's biggest batteries to replace South Bay gas plants. They are replacing gas. This is why they're, they're going to increase gas rates. Look this up for yourselves across the country because they're saying that we have uh, an infrastructure with underground gas that is 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 deadly it's blowing up so please uh stay tuned to granada forum i'll come on often we'll go over some of these um, aspects of takedown so you can uh, create your offensive and certainly improve your health as we go through these very horrific times again everybody thank you go to stopthecrime.net uh, stay tuned to our youtube channel both nick and wendy thank you thank you for having me on this evening's show no problem. I we love I having plan you to come on back. Here. Yeah, I we plan to come back. Deborah, thank you. Oh yeah. By the way, Deborah, thanks. For, thanks for giving me a whole workload this week trying to put this one together. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nick, I, I want to thank you on behalf of everybody that looks at the wonderful job you do on these YouTube. So everyone that's listening, hats off to Nick and Wendy and Granada Forum for making these YouTubes possible and embedding the information that you're hearing me discuss. Everyone stay well, stay safe, we're all together, we're on the same boat, and just stay tuned as we sail across the sea without a chart. All right, see you next week, everybody. Thank you so much, God bless.